Hello guys! Kamusta? My name is Jen and welcome back to our YouTube channel to bring together. It's my off day today. Hindi ako off sa bahay. We still have a lot of things to do. May mga labahan, sampayin, repeating. Oh, no. Naka-make up pero maglalaba lang pala. <laughs> That's the reality of life here in Australia. Speaking of reality of life, today we will continue with our stories and that includes citizenship, retirement, culture, weather, and of course, cost of living. So guys, this is part 2 of our collaboration with Filipino nurses around the world. And if you have yet to subscribe on this YouTube channel, make sure to subscribe and click that notification bell so you'll be updated with our stories. Stay tuned! I can be a citizen after like five years. Now I'm on my almost third year and on the fourth year I can even already apply for a permanent residency and then after that citizenship. Now with my kid and his husband, I'm not so sure yet about that but I think yes, if you bring your family and that would be possible as well. You could actually migrate from the Philippines to New Zealand. You could get your spouse, your partner, your kids, your fiance. You just have to present the immigration of proof that your relationship is genuine. You need to present your marriage contract, your bank statements, bills, pictures from your travels, statement from your family, and messages from your messenger or Skype. The downside is you could get your parents, but you need to earn at least 150,000 New Zealand dollars a year to get one parent. Migration, citizenship, visa application is a very massive topic for discussion. I am not the best person to give advice with regards to all those legal topics. So it's best to read Australian immigration and policies. Before you can become a citizen, you have to be lawful permanent resident for at least four years. If you are a permanent resident and you'd like to bring your direct relative here, you can definitely bring them here as long as you can provide documents that will show that you are directly related to them. Just a heads up that one of the challenges here of starting families, care arrangement issues ng anak, especially if both parents would like to work. In the United Kingdom, pwede tayong maging British citizen. So, inabot ako ng 6 years bago ko nakuha yung citizenship. Yung mga anak ninyo, they too can be uh, can become citizens as well. Uh, the United Kingdom, obviously, they would have to follow a certain process as well. Um, most likely, 5 years din, kasabay halos no uh, process mo. Pero for guidance, look at the .gov website. For employment-based visa or EB3 visa if you got legally married before you come here in the U.S. or before you step into the legal U.S. soil you can have your spouse added as a dependent also if you have children under 21 years old they can come with you as well and be a legal permanent resident or a green card holder you can become a U.S. citizen through naturalization um, You've been a legal permanent resident here for continuous five years and you were able to prove a good moral character, then you can apply for citizenship. Yes, retiring in this country is actually an option. New Zealand is one of the safest countries. The gun laws here are strict. New Zealand is actually close to the Philippines, about 9 to 10 hours flight. The Kiwis are very polite and nice. They're very welcoming. Aww. There's a lot of Filipinos in New Zealand. And if you love different types of food, there's a lot. Downside is houses are actually expensive, especially oh, here no. in the Auckland area. You need at least 500 to 1 million New Zealand dollars just to buy a house, depending on the size and the area in Auckland. That's why a lot of Filipino nurses are actually moving to Australia because the pay there is higher and the houses are actually cheaper. Kami ng husband ko, we would like to retire here. Although of course, hindi naman namin kakalimutan yung Philippines. At saka, we would like Marshall to know the culture of Philippines as well. Australia is a good place to retire. If you already started working, your employer will pay you a certain percentage 
for your retirement fund. That's what we call superannuation. Some sort of a retirement fund that when you reach a certain age, I think about 55, you are permanently retired from work. You have the right to access the superannuation fund. And another good thing here is the healthcare system. We have what we call Medicare. That's one of the benefits of being a permanent resident or a citizen here. We have free checkups, free hospitalizations in public hospitals. Also, education is free in public um, schools for primary and secondary. Um, if you're thinking of buying a property with the nurse's pay, yes, it is possible. It also depends on each person or each family's budgeting and expenses. Bear in mind as well that the properties also varies depending on the location. When we talk about retirement, isa sa pinakamabigat na topics about that is healthcare. Healthcare po dito sa United Kingdom is free. Na mas maganda po talagang mag-retire na hindi ko na kailangan isipin yung ganun, yung healthcare kung magkano yung babayaran ko. Afford ba ng isang nurse makabili ng bahay dito sa UK? Actually, expectations to not a minimum level but to realistic levels. Basta marunong lang mag-manage ng finances. It's an option. You can actually apply for retirement benefits once you are at least 61 years old or close to 62 years old. We have Medicare here also. Medicare are for those who are 65 years old or older, a legal permanent resident for continuous five years. Some of the employers offers 401k retirement plan. So this plan is offered by employers to their employees. Um, this is like profit sharing plan. The employer can actually contribute to your retirement for a starting um, registered nurse, you can actually um, apply for a mortgage loan for a housing that will cost for up to $200,000. These are the one of the insurances that we pay is what we call the rent of room. It's like a pension and of course if you get old and you're retired, you get money from the government of course. And the services from hospitals are also free. Now when it comes to you know mortgages, if you want to want to get house um, you can do that it's possible as well but you know houses here in Europe are kind of you know expensive oh, and if you no. live here hindi uso yung ano eh hindi uso yung bumibili ng bahay more on the rent how they rent homes culture in general here in Australia has some similarities and differences also from Philippines. They also love to spend time with families. What I've discussed in work-life balance, ang mga malls dito, they close at 5 p.m. because they would love to have family time. So, uh, kami na husband ko, both Filipinos, quite a challenge for us also on how to raise a kid, the Filipino and the Australian way. Considering also that here in Australia is a uh, very multicultural country. Pag lumaki na yung mga bata dito, they tend to be more independent. Very friendly rin naman ang mga Australian. They're very palabate. They'll say, hi, how are you? Have a lovely day. Australian is a very open country. Lalo ngayon summer, the the way of dressing up here, to show off ng skin, it's not a big deal here. Unlike us in the Philippines, na medyo may pagka-conservative pa tayo. The United Kingdom, Ang kagandahan is everybody is encouraged to speak up. You as a nurse is given the chance to talk. Now, ang kagandahan po dito walang seniority. Kasi everybody should value, di ko sinasabing would value, kung ano yung sasabihin mo. You have to also um, remember, the United Kingdom is, ve is very tolerant. Ano? Very multicultural po ang, ang United Kingdom. Lalo na po sa mga big cities. Lahat ng nations are represented when you are working in the hospitals. By nature po, British people tend to be very polite. They like saying things like, please, uh, means and may terms of endearment pa nga po. Most of them, they are very direct, they are straightforward, um, they are workaholic, they are more serious. And when it comes to their personal space, um, you need to respect it because some of us were used to if we got too excited, if we got too happy, we tend to touch people. They don't like that unless you are very, very close. 
Kastner says we are adaptive to change and we can easily adjust. Um, they usually eat hamburgers. Um, they don't usually eat rice. And people are very serious when I'm at work. It's very seldom that I see them smile or what. Um, you know, the Filipino vibe, the Filipino spirit is very, is very nakakahawa. But the good thing about the Germans is that um, they're very disciplined, which is mahirap makita sa mga Pilipino. They follow rules. If you see a co-Filipino, eh, parang nakakangiti, nakakagaan ng loob. Very welcoming. They love immigrants. They love sports. They love the nature. They try to protect New Zealand from pests. The downside is stores close early. Except if you're in the central business area, shops there close late. Transportation, it's, it's not that good. In general, people are nice and it's a good place to live. Hindi po mahiyama ng mga nurses dito sa United Kingdom. Pero, I have to say, hindi rin kayo maghihikahos kung nurse kayo dito sa United Kingdom. So, ang sagot dyan, sakto lang. I live comfortably. City po, like London, mas mataas ang sweldo kasi may high cost allowance yan, uh, supplement. Pa, dahil nga mahal doon, Pero anong ibig sabihin nun? Mas mataas ang sweldo, mas mataas din ang gastos. Sa countryside, mas mababa. Pero then again, mas mura din ang kaunti. Tama lang siya compared to what I'm earning right now. We're in a area that has higher cost of living. Well, your per hour rate will be higher. Range of $1,800 per cutoff. And for example, your house is $400. $50 per month here. Our house is $450 per month and our grocery would usually range for $100. Where I live here in Freiburg, it's south, it's southern part ng Germany. It's very livable. Although the houses um, are quiet, I, I are a bit of expensive, but you know, the Lebensmittel or yung kinakain, um, yung mga pinapamili na clothing, food, are very affordable. I can say more siya. Like, actually, malapit na siya sa Pilipinas price eh. And, you know, the Europeans here earn double. You can also check the um, numbio.com and you just put in the city where you want to check how much the cost of living is. They will show you how much. The cost of living here in New Zealand is actually expensive. You could actually check my YouTube channel. I did a video about the cost of living, about my rent my groceries, my cell phone bills, and my petrol. So yeah, it's expensive, but the salary is good. So it's just equal. But at least I'm still saving a lot of money for my future. Especially, I, I could still send money back to the Philippines. Currently, we are staying here in Sydney, which is considered one of the most expensive city to live. But it still depends on each person or each family's spending habit. I mean, my husband, ko, we still believe that it's still best to maintain a simple and frugal lifestyle. Although, it's not bad naman time to time you get to spend something for food or you want to buy something or travel to a new place. What's important is you have a budget and track your expenses and that includes food, remittance, insurance, transportation, and others. So make sure you watch the video which we have discussed the usual expenses here in Australia. Here is the quota. That's one thing that I hate the most here because of the extreme winter. In fact, I actually created a video on why I hate winter. There are times that it will be below zero Fahrenheit. In the future, you might consider to those areas that don't have this kind of extreme weather, such as you can consider Texas, Florida, or California, or any other states. But still, we have four seasons. We can enjoy fall, um, spring, summer. Because for me, winter is just beautiful or it's just pretty when it comes to picture taking. You know, Germany is part of Europe. 
it's four seasons. So merong winter, may autumn, may spring, and summer. Other like summer is really hot, like in like temperatures of Philippines, and spring is kind of fresh. Autumn is just you know cool and fresh that you just have to wear a coat. Very nice for Instagramming because. You know, the leaves are falling, the leaves are orange, it looks very nice. And winter is the most, pinaka sad, yung, the most sad um, season of all, which yung hatest ko rin. Because in winter, it's always gloomy, the night comes early at 5pm or 4pm, it's already dark outside. Weather here varies from North Island to South Island. South Island tends to be cold and windy. North Island is warmer and temperate compared to the South Island. The winter here is not that bad. It doesn't snow. It's snow on the mountain ranges, but it doesn't snow here um, in Auckland. But you could get four seasons in one day. I've seen worse. We still get a lot of sunshine, so that's good. It's good for your mental health. So here in Australia, we have four seasons. Ayon, it's December, so we are already on summer season. From December to February, pagpasko, mainit yung pasko namin. And the temperature can shoot up until about 45 degrees yung pinakamataas na experience namin dito. Ganyan pag summer, masarap mag-camping, punta sa beach. March, April, May, that's an autumn season. Medyo malamig-lamig na and mahangin in preparation for the winter. Winter is from June to August. Dito sa Sydney, may mga dadayuhin ka lang na mga lugar. If you wanna experience snow, like Blue Mountains, Snowy Mountains, Otherwise, hindi naman talaga nagsusnow. My favorite season is spring, which is tama lang yung temperature. Sakto lang yung lamig. Maganda tingnan yung mga flowers na nag-bloom. And maraming flower festival. So, ayan. It's like the song. It's winter, spring, summer, and fall. So, with all those four seasons, uh, para sa akin, the advantage of that is that there's a reason for you to change your wardrobe. Uh, ang ganda nga po nun kasi meron kang iba't ibang pagkakataon na itry ang iba't ibang damit. So that's good. I mean, I say that para sa akin, pero actually I just wear very simple clothing. Pero at least yung pieces ko, she loves it. Ang kagandahan po na may apat na seasons is that you always look forward to something new every three or four months or so. What do I mean by that? The winter, maybe you like the snow. All those snow, Hindi ganun kalakas dito, pero when snow comes in the UK, everybody tends to notice. Summer sa United Kingdom, kaya maraming activities, kaya masaya ang ta tao. Kasi po, matagal ang araw. Pwede pong mag around 5 a.m., bababa po ang araw around 10 p.m. So, essentially, literally, mahaba ang araw. However, meron din pong history ang United Kingdom for having what we call a wet summer. Uh, so, minsan nga po, ang maaraw nga, pero maulan naman. Malakas ang ulan. Uh, and obviously, being a four-season country, needless to say, ang spring din, minsan mabasa, about wet, wet spring din yan, or minsan you could have a wet autumn as well. So, I guess it's just the downside of living in such countries. But then again, I still say, Maganda pa rin ang United Kingdom. So that's part two of our collaboration with some of the Filipino nurses around the world. The stories we shared are only based from our personal experiences. We hope you enjoyed our videos. Make sure to watch part one as well. Please support us by subscribing on our YouTube channels. And if you have any questions dun sa particular country, I have listed down their channels in the description box. Thank you again for watching our videos and I hope you all have a lovely day. Bye!